Hello there my friends and welcome back to the Scott Re project and today we're back on the game baby. Game cookery, it's one of my favourite styles of cooking, beautiful, fresh, wild game, cannot be beaten. And it's that time of year where the farmer's crops are just starting to sprout and the pigeon is a major, major pest to the agricultural industry. So do your bit, get out there, shoot them and eat them. So what I'm going to be doing then is a very, very simple pan fried pigeon dish. You can see on this beautifully garish pheasant plate, I have got six pigeon breasts. I've also got three cloves, cloves of garlic. And what I'm going to be serving it on top of is a beautiful braised red cabbage dish. So I've got half a red cabbage chopped, one large onion sliced. I've got about two tablespoons of brown sugar, some balsamic vinegar, 250 mils of chicken stock and some oil. So the first thing we need to do then is get our onions on sweating down. So I've got some oil in the pan with my onions straight in. Now what we need to do, we don't want to burn these. So I'm going to turn the heat down gently. We let them tick over. We don't want them caramelizing. We just want them to go translucent. What a word, translucent. Okay, after 10 minutes, just take your time with this. The onions are nice translucent, just starting to caramelize. Now we can add our garlic. Now you can chop these if you want to. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use garlic press. So get our garlic in. Obviously you don't want to put it in with the start of your onions because you will burn it. No one likes burnt garlic unless it's roasted. So we'll get our three garlic cloves in, just like that. Just let it get to know those onions a little bit. And then in with our beautiful red cabbage. Just have a look at that. The colour is amazing, isn't it? Man, it's like an acid trip. Right, we'll get our cabbage in there. Give it a little bit of a mix up. Now we want to let this cabbage wilt down a bit. So another 10 minutes, I suppose, you know, don't rush this. It's well worth the wait. I mean, it only takes about 30 minutes, you know, and what you're going to be left with is a beautiful braised red cabbage and those beautiful pigeon breasts sitting on top. Right then, just let that gently wilt down. I think I'll put the lid on slightly just to help it on its way. Right then, that's my cabbage wilted down, just to help it on its way a bit. Colours of spring, isn't it? What I'm going to do then, straight in, 250ml of chicken stock. By all means, use vegetable stock, or even better, if you kept your bones from your pigeons or any of your game through the season and made a game stock, put some of that in. So we're just going to put 250 mil in at the moment. I might top that up a bit. Then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. I reckon one, two, and then a couple of drops. This balsamic I got here, this beautiful balsamic vinegar, is 15 years old. So I'd say a couple of tablespoons of that. I'm going to get the lid on that and we need to let that braise for about 20 minutes. We will check it after 10 to see where we are, see if it's started to soften. And then when it's nearly done, we get these bad boys on. Look at that beady eye. So that's been braising lightly for 10 minutes, as you can see. Change colour, just take a couple of strands out, put it in that bowl. Just try it, see if it's nice and soft. Have a go on it. So nice. So nice. That sugar sweetens it up. That balsamic cuts through it. It's beautiful. Give it another 10 minutes. I mean, you could take it as soft as you want. I do want it a little bit of bite to it, you know, so it doesn't feel like you're eating just mush, to be frank with you. So, my cabbage 
has been doing for 20 minutes. It's nice and soft. I'm just going to move it on to the other hob and we can get on and do these beautiful pigeon breasts. It's absolutely tipping it down here. I don't know if you can hear it. Let me move the mic. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Okay then. So any meat you are going to pan fry or roast for that matter, be it game, poultry or beef, pork, lamb, always take it out of your fridge, something like this, half hour before you're going to cook it or a joint, an hour, two hours, to bring it up to room temperature. That way we are guaranteed a great cook all the way through and especially with these, a great sear. Now what we are going to do is we're going to season these up. Easiest way to do that is I season up the board now the health and safety police out there always getting on my case in do you flip your board do you wash it don't worry my friends this has been flipped over onto the clean side so get plenty of pepper on there now you can add chili flakes which i do sometimes this time i'm going to add a bit of paprika just to get a little bit of heat in it so there is my pepper Gonna get some salt on there and shake a bit of paprika. I know it looks mad, it looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. And then I'm gonna cook four of these. So if you get it, one, two, three, four. Make sure it's patted down nicely. And we can turn it over, pat it down on that side. On that side, pick up all those bits, do the same with the others, and that should be your pigeon breasts nicely coated in whatever you want to coat it in. I mean, go to town here, you know, cooking game, it should be fun, it shouldn't be hard. People are a bit daunted about cutting, cooking game, they think it's going to be dry, they're going to dry it out, or they don't know how to tackle it. Have fun with it. Just have a go with it. It's not a million miles away from cooking chicken. You know, if you just use your noddle a bit. But give it a go. Do not be scared of the game. Because it's a beautiful, natural, fat-free, wild product. And it shows in the taste. Right. I am going to move the camera on to the stove. And we are going to cook these bad boys. Okay then, I've had the pan on the heat for a few moments. Gonna add in some oil. Place gently my pigeon breasts into said oil. As you can see, not too near to each other. So we don't take the heat out of the pan and we just let those cook gently. I mean, pigeon, it needs to be rare. Uh, you're either going to cook this real quick like this or stew it, pot roast it really slow. But if you're going to do it like this, you want it pink in the middle. If you don't like your pigeon pink in the middle, go to McDonald's because this needs to be cooked rare. If you don't cook it that way, what you'll find is this beautiful pigeon will taste like offal, like kidneys. Where it should taste like the finest fillet steak known to man. There you go. So, three or four minutes, then we'll turn it over, take them out, lightly tent it with foil, once they've rested, and then we'll plate up. Okay, then they've had a few minutes on the one side, I'm just going to turn them over. Beautiful colour with that paprika on, it's really brought out the redness of that meat. And we want to get a decent colour on them. Obviously, it's just going to be on the outside. It's going to be lovely, pink, tender, and juicy. And who doesn't like a tender, pink, and juicy breast? I couldn't help that. That was a cheap shot. Hey, baby, you set them up, and I'll knock them down. While I've taken my lovely pigeon breasts out of the pan, I've still got it on the heat. I'm just going to turn it down a little. I'm going to add a little splash of beautiful creme de cassis to the pan. Lovely, lovely black currant liqueur. Collect all those juices. Just 
let it thicken. Just try that. Mmm. It's caramelized blackcurrant. Beautiful. I'm gonna pour the resting juices from my pigeon in, and that will be a little sauce just to go on top. Right, time to plate up this beautiful braised cabbage. Fantastic purple against that white plate. And like the late, great Keith Floyd said, always a white plate, always a round plate. None of this oblong stuff, none of this black, none of this slate, the white plate is a bare canvas for you to create on. Right, onto the pitch. Now, this really needs to be pink like I said before. Let's just cut it. Oh, look at it. Just look at this. When I said like the finest fillet steak, look at the moisture, the juice. It, it takes some beating. Oh God. Just that little bit of heat. Now again, I ain't no chef. This is real food, as I say, for real people. I think all that needs is a little dollop of that sauce, which is the pan juices. And then a bit of creme de cassis. Reduce very quickly, very simple. And then maybe some new season, new potatoes. I think that is an absolutely cracking little dish. Let's go for it. The meat is killer already. It's absolutely beautiful. That sauce as well, that black currant comes through. It's so light, it's fruity, it's meaty. Not a hint of gain. That's the main thing here, not a hint of gain. There's no gaininess, it's just like beautiful steak. And the cabbage. Mm. Excuse me a minute. Well, that is a beautifully simple game dish. Nothing to be scared of, you know? Just have a look at that. The shine on it as well. Brilliant. Anyway, I've got to sum this up. Well, there you go, my friends. A wonderfully simple, seasonal game dish. It takes some beating, that does. It really, really is a winner. And what takes the most time, obviously, is a cabbage, 30 minutes. But it really adds to the dish, you know, colour on the plate. Like I said, some new potatoes with it. You know, make a bit more of the sauce. You've got a winning dish. So do give this a go. Get your game on. Don't be scared. It's simple and it's beautiful. And on that note, if you've liked what you've seen here today, and I know you do, stop teasing me and press that red button down here and subscribe. Also find me on my social media at Facebook, Scott Ree and the Scott Ree Project, and also on my Twitter at the Scott Ree Project. So until next time, my friends, hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was gorgeous. Take care.